Hello everyone, this is Tasty Snackies with RogueDeckBuilder.com and today we're going to be taking a look at a popper deck tech and this time we're taking a look at Rakdos Control. So Rakdos Control is a variation on the mono black control slash mono black devotion deck that's been popular in popper for quite some time. But instead of going mono black we're splashing some red stuff for some burn and some really sweet stuff in the sideboard as well. Starting off with our creatures we have a 3 of fire brand archer. Now as a 2 1 for 2 isn't necessarily that good in this format. Her ability more than makes up for it and considering that we're running 22 spells in this deck she's really good in the early game. She's really good at closing out games for us and she's also a pretty decent removal magnet as well. Next we have a 3 of Phyrexian Rager and while it won't help us too much when we're trying to advance the board, being able to pay 3 mana to get a 2-2 out and draw a card out of it isn't really that bad at all, but I don't know if we can justify playing a playset, but 3 sounds good enough to me. So I need to pause and make a revision here because I made this video before the spoiler season for Rivals of Ixalan started and once I saw Dusk Legion Zealot, I knew that had to replace Phyrexian Rager immediately because it's much better to play on turn two as opposed to turn three. Yeah, we lose a point of power and toughness, but that's negligible. This card is just way better. We're also running four Chittering Rats, and this is the only card in the entire deck that has double black in its mana cost because we're really trying to play cards that are easily splashable, but Chittering Rats is good enough to where, you know, we don't have to really worry about that considering that whenever we cast it, we can lock our opponent's hand out if they have one card in their hand. And if we can chain like two or three together, that can pretty much close the game out for us. We have a three we have Thorn of the Black Rose. Now, four mana for a 1-3 death touch in this format, eh, it's not really that stellar. But considering that she can make us the Monarch is really good considering that we have a lot of removal spells in this deck to keep our opponents off bay from becoming the Monarch. So we just gain incremental advantage because of something like Thorn of the Black Rose. And to round out our creatures, we have a three of Gurmag Angler. So we're playing a bunch of spells and we expect our creatures to die. So we might as well turn all those cards in the bin into a large 5-5. I feel like if you're playing Black and Popper, you should at least be running one copy of Gurmag Angler. Beginning with our burn spells, we start off with a three of Flame Slash. So one mana deals four damage to target creature. Ain't that bad. It is sorcery speed, but it does compensate by adding an extra damage to the face so you know we can take out mere enforcers or any other large threats on the board we also have a four of lightning bolt because it's well it's classic lightning bolt deals three damage to anything at instant speed it's objectively better than flame slash which is why we're running a playset as opposed to three and to round out the red spells we have a two of magma spray so you know we can lob two damage at a big creature like ulamog's crusher if they're playing the reanimator strategy and then play an actual removal spell to make sure that it gets exiled or we can take care of smaller creatures that we feel like will be persisting and coming back and just being an overall nuisance to us. We also have a two of a Raven's Crime here and normally I wouldn't play a card like this, but considering that we're playing a lot of draw spells in this deck and ways to draw a bunch of lands, which we're also running 22 of, that's pretty high in popper, uh, we'll be able to get Raven's Crime off pretty consistently. We have a two of Chainer's Edict in here. It's probably the best edict in all of popper considering that it has flashback but most of the time we won't have the game drag out long enough to where we will cast it for its flashback cost but just in case you know we will run this card over any other option and it's just a really solid removal spell because it helps us get around hex proof stuff like moguls or anything like that and to finish off the removal spells on our main board we have a three of terminate so this card pretty much convinced me to move over to red from mono black just to try out cards like terminate because being able to flat out out destroy creatures even though regeneration isn't really going to be that relevant of a thing unless your opponent is jamming river boas or anything like that terminate is a pretty solid card and to round out the spells in our deck we have a four of knight's whisper and a two of read the bones and both of these cards here they draw us cards uh read the bones lets us dig a little bit deeper than knight's whisper would but we're playing these cards over something like sign and blood because again they're splashable we don't have to rely on having double black mana on turn two we just need the single black mana and i really like read the bones i think this card is I wouldn't say severely underplayed in Popper, but I think people should look at Read the Bones more than they should with something like Sign and Blood, in my personal opinion. 
As far as our lands are concerned, we have a four of Bloodfell Caves and a three of Rakdos Carnarium. These are our dual lands for the deck. These are the best that you're probably gonna get. And Rakdos Canarium helps with another land in our deck, so there is some synergies with that. But as far as dual lands go, this is pretty much all that you'll need. And for the other non-basic lands on our deck, we have a one of Bajukabog and three of Radiant Fountain. So both of these work well with Rakdos Canarium. We can bounce them back. Uh, play them again to get their effects, especially with Radiant Fountain. We're going to be drawing a bunch of cards and losing a bunch of life as a result, so Radiant Fountain helps us recover. And Bajuka Bog is really good against uh, graveyard base decks, so that way we don't have to play something like Relic of Progenitus and get rid of our graveyard so we can't play Gurmag Angler. And to round out our basics, we have seven swamps and four mountains. And the reason why we're running more swamps is because, well, we need to be able to have Black Mana on turn two, so that way we can cast Knight's Whisper or just draw into more lands and get more mountains to play our spells because you know having a turn one lightning bolt isn't necessarily the biggest priority in our deck but having black men on turn two is significantly more important for this strategy. Taking a look at our sideboard we have a one of Bujuka Bog. we bring this in against more graveyard based decks again it's just much better than Relic of Progenitus in this deck. We have a two of Duress and we bring this against any like Evan Carr's Justice decks or anything that runs a bunch of non-creature spells like Affinity or uh, Boros Aggro or anything like that. We also have a two of Electricry and this is one of the main reasons why I moved over to red from black because yeah, while we can shoot one creature for one damage for its overload, we have a one-sided Shrivel. So I think this card is just objectively better than Shrivel in almost every way possible. We also have a two of Tragic Slip because the deck is just full of removal spells and Tragic Slip helps take care of the biggest creatures in Popper like Ulamox Crusher, Ancient Brontodon, or anything similar to that. We also have two more Chainer's Edict to bring in against like any opponents where, you know, we feel like Edicts are more necessary or if we're playing against something like Hexproof strategies or Bogles in general. We have one of Doomblade because it's Doomblade. You can't fault the Doomblade because the Doomblade is awesome because, well, Doomblade. We have a one of Echoing Decay, and this card is really good against token strategies. It's very similar to Electricery, but it just nails one creature in specific. So again, it's really good against tokens or anything that's coming up the board with small, annoying creatures like the Delver decks do. We have a two of Blightning, and this is a card that I'm trying out. I don't know if I necessarily like it or not, but you know, for three mana, being able to shoot someone for three damage and have them discard two cards seems pretty decent, especially if we just jam it in against Control and just give them a really hard time with all of this discard. We also have one more Gurmag Angler just in case our opponent is playing more Gurmag Anglers than we are so we got to bring it up to four or if we just need more bigger bodies against any other types of decks Gurmag Angler helps us out with that. And to round out our sideboard, we have a one of Reaping the Graves, which is one of the very few storm cards that is legal in the format. And considering that we're running a bunch of one drop and two drop removal spells, we can chain like two or three spells together, then cast Reaping the Graves, get back like a Thorn of the Black Rose and a Cheering Rats and a Gurmag Angler, and we can just go to town. And that's Rakdos Control and Popper for you, everyone. Be sure to let me know what you think of this deck in the comments section down below, whether or not you liked it. And if you did, be sure to throw us a like our way as it helps us out with the channel considerably. Anyways, I'm Tasty Snackies with RogueDeckBuilder.com. You all have been wonderful, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our playlist of Popper content here, and also our other MTG videos here. Don't forget to subscribe and to also hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we release content.